Patreon exclusive. Hey Patreon supporters, you're tuned in to After Hours, presented by Realm of the Mist Entertainment. Listener discretion advised. Very, very, you need to pay attention game. That is not something that's easily done. Well, we just do one hour after hours, a little bit of alcohol, and then you guys go play. Oculus isn't plugged in. Well, you know what I got to say to all that? Welcome to fucking After Hours. I'm Chris Dolly. <laughs> you did it again? I did it again. Yeah. It's nice. All right, then. It's nice to, uh, to reuse old jokes. God almighty, that fucking look on your face. <laughs> look. We don't have cameras up. Your fucking screenshot of your fucking, you know, egotistical background on your computer. <laughs> oh, you mean, you mean my level-headed picture? Your level-headed picture. Is, is that the cup that gave me copper poisoning? No, that's my own copper. Actually, oh, okay. actually, you know what? Actually, bring bring that picture well, back up real quick. <laughs> I got to be fair here. I got I got to critique this. I got I got to be like an art critique person. Hold on. There it is. Actually, it's looking at the camera. You guys, you, you guys can all see this picture. Yes. 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 All right. I want to explain this for for the listening audience. The look on Zephyr's face as he's he's standing straight, or he's sitting straight with a golden yeah. cup on his head, and he's he's balancing it on his head. But the look on his face is like, God damn it! I want to move because I can smell that fucking fart. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, look like, you look like somebody crop dusted your ass. No, no. See that that look is look. Himself. That looks the look he well. gives me. That look is the look he gives me when I do bad jokes. <laughs> Tr- trust me when I say Dusty. That is not exclusive to you. That is the all around in general look that, to a that, bad joke being made. That's not. That's not the bad joke look. The bad joke look has the raised eyebrow. This picture doesn't have the raised eyebrow. Oh, Wait a minute. A I got point. it. I got it. It's, it's like it's like one of those pictures, uh, those games where you got to find the things wrong with the pictures. All right. The look on his face, the look of disgust on his face could could suggest that somebody ripped ass in his direction while he's trying to keep that thing balanced on his head. But in reality, looking at the fucking string of beads on around his neck, you showed your boobs at Mardi Gras, didn't you? And you're ashamed of yourself. Well... There, there's two different ways that we can actually take that. First off, let's do the actual way that's of saying a, that's, that's not... actually a chainmail necklace. That's not beads. Yes, it's chainmail. It's and woven secondly, chainmail. if he was looking for beads from Mardi Gras, actually, that picture is old enough that it could have been from a rag where we had Mardi Gras. Speaking of farts, I'm sorry. Don't breathe, guys. Seriously, don't breathe. You know, you know, you know. I am very disappointed in myself that I, if I was gonna, if I was gonna invoke a chain link uh, correction, that I did not have nerd queued up on sound effects. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, well, for people listening, we might want to want to explain what's going on here with after hours. Yeah. Um, what what we've got here is a great group of guys that have been friends of mine for years that I haven't seen in a while and Chris. So welcome to after hours, dusty friend edition. <laughs> oh, this is definitely de- uh, dusty's after hours, but it's not for friends. It's, it's not. No, this one is going after the last after hours. For those that have heard the last after hours, a lot of dusty's friends and myself decided we're going to sit down and have a very serious after hours. We're staging an intervention. <laughs> oh, I was no. that wait, 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 wait. Is it a men intervention? <laughs> it's a men. <laughs> it's it, it's an intermenstruation. Um, There's so many things I could say about that joke, but I'm just gonna let it lie. <laughs> this is after hours. You don't let it lie. No, everything you let it all. Hang I'm out. just gonna let. I'm just gonna let dead dogs lie. Well, here here here's another thing because we kind of jumped right into this. Who's everyone talking? <laughs> That's I was gonna point. get there. Okay. I was gonna get there. Okay. Introduce yourselves. <laughs> oh, uh, as always. Well, not as always for after hours, but hey, 
It's Zephyr Zero, host of Press A Gaming, here to fuck shit up and drink a lot. I'm succeeding in one of those goals. Uh, you've got UA Blackwing, sometimes guest on Press A Gaming, along with the Sock Drawer here on Realm of the Mist Entertainment, succeeding in finishing his first bottle of alcohol in a long time. Oh, so we get to have a counter who gets drunk first. No, 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 no. I'm dealing with a back problem right now, but the medicine's been out of my system for long enough that I'm allowed to have a drink and one drink only. Yep. Now, I'm the there... all-consuming flame of gluttony. <laughs> <laughs> I love him. I do love that and intro. I... <laughs> and, I, and I am Dusty from the sock drawer, which, why are we doing intervention again? <laughs> Well, we're having an intervention for... Actually, it's a celebration. We're celebrating you getting that ugly-ass mole removed. I'm sorry. I shouldn't talk about Salem like that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when he's not here to okay. defend himself. <laughs> well. <laughs> it's coming back out. I was about to say, I heard the last half hours. I think that you have the counter that you need to put up. Oh, yep. Shots <laughs> fired. So... God for, damn it. For, for those of us who didn't listen to the last After Hours episode, what the fuck's wrong with you? You need to start listening to it because it was a thing of gold. But <laughs> our good friend Dusty here liked to say some things that maybe shouldn't have been said or situations that came up. And, well, we had a counter system going on, one of which was the Shots Fired Counter. All right. Shots Fired Counter is up. Are you getting that, Chris? Oh, I see it, but I can't record it. You'll have to send it to me. And this time, just let me know you actually sent it before I actually edit the video. Oh. <laughs> it was if so I don't disappointing. Have to record two. Yeah, I Trump tried. Lord God Dude, the only you. way the only way OBS would grab it is it is doing a screenshot. And by screenshot, I mean like the screen of the After Hours logo is covered by my desktop background, the Skype picture. It, it was picture within picture within picture. It was fucking distracting as all balls. <laughs> but, but, but then again, it's probably a good thing because after being forced to listen to it, I, we had way too many counters that I'm responsible for. <laughs> oh, did Sa did Salem actually force you to listen to it finally? Yeah, he, oh he said... He, you had to have I, Salem I'm, force you to listen to you to show you were on? He came over oh. to... He came over to, to, to see if we wanted to discuss the next podcast. And he's like, oh, by the way, I've got this new show you really should listen to. And next thing I know, it was that. Like, <laughs> That's right, folks. We are so devoted to Realm of the Myths that we have to trick our fucking uh, co-workers into listening to their own show. Well, I, I was scared of it because I only remember half of the episode. What? I mean, I, I'm kind of in that same boat, too, because, like, why would we listen to our own shows? We recorded them. Well, if, if it's one I remember, I listened to it to see how it sounded. But I, I, I seriously, I only remember half of that episode, and that's not a good thing. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll give you, oh, I'll give no, you an that episode critique. was a kind of gold. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you what. I'll, I'll tell you what. I'll give, I'll give you an honest critique, Dusty. Okay. You okay. sounded fine. Okay. You were okay. drunk as shit, but you sounded fine. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's something, I suppose. <laughs> and we already have a drunk drinks finish. Is this going to be like last week? Is this really going to be like last week where we have about eight different uh, uh, counters? Uh, yeah, probably. Wait a minute, wait a minute where's my love? Unfortunately, there's not going to be any sound effects because my button app stopped working. Oh. And I just, can do sound effects. <laughs> Just when, I, right, just I, when I was about to announce the window in here. Down There's down three here. sweaty guys in here, and it's getting uncomfortable. I'm cat stander. I'm allergic to the cats. No, no, fuck. Okay. Fuck that. <laughs> fuck that. Leave that shit closed and put a bottle in there. We can could, we could market that shit. Put it in a candle. <laughs> three sweaty oh. dudes in a room. Which brings up the last After Hours episode again of, us talk, of them talking about... Gwyneth Paltrow's newest item. What was it called? The I don't want to go there again. Candle. It was a vagina scent. It was her vagina scented candle. Oh, and speaking it, of which, Chris, her vagina. That, li that link you sent me with dildos. Uh, that was interesting. <laughs> yeah, I told you. I told. I told you she, she, that new shit. That is something she does. It was. It. It is. It is a literal fire crotch. Oh, <laughs> uh, come on. 
I am home. That was bad, even by my standards. You have standards. believe me, I have very low standards for for jokes. Like, by the way, Dusty, <laughs> did you have to clean your mic after the last episode? Um, the mic's too big to do what I was suggesting to do with it. Thank God. <laughs> everything's a dildo if you try hard enough. Everything's a dildo if you're brave enough. No, everything's a dildo if you work your way up to it. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Ladies yeah. and gentlemen, my friend group. <laughs> Let, let's be fair. Let's be fair. Let's be fair, Let, let's be fair Dusty. You, you don't have to take the anal beads from the, the big end first. You can always start small and work your way in. Oh, no, thank you. Uh-uh. <laughs> this is why I'm single right there. I'm just saying, you start with one finger, then you move to two, and then you go straight to the fist. Uh, <laughs> Actually, you know this what? Is... I got a topic of conversation because you brought it up. The finger oh, no. thing. <laughs> I had arguments with many people. Look at your own finger right now. Everybody, look at your finger. Every, people okay. at home too. And you Which notice, finger? Doesn't matter. Any any of the fingers, because it's still except for the thumb. The thumb doesn't count. The okay. actual fingers. All right. You, and you can see where it bends in two different places before the actual, like you know, fist knuckle, right? Mhm. Mhm. Is that one knuckle or two on that finger? Two. I have had arguments with people that the first indent is not a knuckle. And oh, supposedly that is so it's, a knuckle. And it's, supposedly it's even scientifically, like you can look it up, it's scientifically not considered a knuckle. If I can it's a pop, joint. If I can pop it, it's a knuckle. If when, <laughs> I pu- if, if, if when I punch you, I can feel it, it's a knuckle. And it was all born from a conversation about going two knuckles deep. Oh, <laughs> oh excuse me. Oh, and burp counter. so it begins. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, alcohol makes me at this, <laughs> at this point, the counters are for our benefit only. <laughs> that's, that's all right. That's all right. We'll let people know at the end. We, that's what I was going to say. Salem read them off for everybody at the end. That's why I wasn't overly concerned about it not being there. Ah. Uh, hmm. So, anyways, we're having an intervention for Dusty. Oh yeah, because uh, she was, she was, uh, well, let's put it this way: she was damn near prostituting herself on Patreon. <laughs> I didn't hear that. Oh yeah, you I, did. I'm pretty, sure that was me- I'm pretty sure that was mentioned during the episode at some point. Oh yeah, a uh, hundred ep- uh, a hundred comments, and she would uh, send a uh, vagina scented sock to somebody. Oh, yeah, no, I did do that. <laughs> I don't recall that. I'm pleading the fifth. <laughs> hey, hey, every pure-blooded American has the right to sell the sock they store their dildo in. <laughs> Sex work is real work. <laughs> Luckily, we haven't had any comments, so we're okay. <laughs> do, do you want to know how quickly I can fix that? <laughs> it's cheating. It's all you. Uh, if, I didn't if, say that. if that if that's the, I just have to post in the right place and like if that's the thi- if that's the dollars. thing that makes us go viral and makes us famous, <laughs> I I I just don't even. <laughs> what is that? I, I'm playing with sound effects on my phone and I can't find anything good. Again, oh, guys. Uh, that was that was people commenting on your Patreon. <laughs> yeah. I don't I don't even have a single person on my Patreon. It's sad. Neither do <sighs> we. Don't feel bad. I Realm of the Mist does pretty well in all avenues, but Patreon, we had one supporter and they disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> but I don't even I, I don't even check the Patreon page anymore. Like After Hours is supposed to be exclusive to Patreon, but it didn't bring anybody there, and I felt great content was being wasted. So fuck it, we're back on YouTube. Yeah. And if the last episode goes viral, that I don't have to worry about getting you know child support and stuff anymore. I'm okay with that. <laughs> I don't know about child support, but you might wind up in court after the last episode. <laughs> <laughs> I'm willing to get drunk every week if it makes money. Nothing, so. nothing illegal <laughs> happened on last episode. You have no idea, though. Let me let me explain something. When when I was still with my ex wife, and we were fighting for custody of her other kids, her her ex went online and discovered uh, like jackass style footage that I had done with friends, as well as like uh, performances with my band when I was with Disillusion Purity, and tried to use <coughs> them in court to prove that I was a gay Satan worshiper. Wow. 
What? That's wait, reaching. Wait a minute. Whoa, whoa, hold on a second. I was doing something else just now. What? What? Uh, the, Chris is a gay Satan worshiper. Yeah, that, I got it, that part. It's old news. Okay. No then. wonder he's so hot. <laughs> Damn, the alcohol's kicking in again. <laughs> No, but <laughs> no, seriously, I had to explain. I had to explain in court about shock value in rock and roll and using the jackass style stunts as promotion to get people to come out to see my band that I had given up to be a father and husband. By the way, I had to sit in court and explain the reasons I did the shit I did for my band from years previous. So yeah, that episode could wind you up in court. <laughs> here's here's my issue. What the fuck difference does it make if you're a homosexual or a Satan worshiper? That doesn't affect your fathering abilities. All right, that's here, a good here's point. The reason, here's the here's the reason for the homosexuality statement was because in one of the jackass stunts, I drank watered down uh uh whipped cream out of Excuse a condom. Me? Okay. So. I guess that was inappropriate for children who were not well, old enough to even see the video. I was going to say, were children even there? No. <laughs> it was so my dog and my lead guitarist. <laughs> Are you saying that, oh, well, if you want to be a dad, you can't have ever done anything stupid? Well, well that's that's I'm disqualified. I was going to say, that disqualifies everyone. Every male over the age of... <laughs> Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. You don't have to be male to be a father. No, but to be fair, you have to be stupid to become a father sometimes. Exactly. Fair enough. <laughs> fair point. <laughs> Valid. I think that's a shot's fired. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I, just, I just have to put that in there. Yeah, ding. But no, ser seriously, I mean, you don't, it's surprising what people bring into court to try to discredit somebody. And I oh, mean, so, just, sorry, yeah, completely I know. off topic, but do you want to know what the sound effect for the dildo counter is? Yes. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> somebody, somebody has to have one of those stoppers on, on the, on the floor by the, by the, by the door. The, the stopper on a spring. You know, oh yeah, those things that we play with as a kid. <laughs> so you want to know something kind of funny here, buddy? Sure. Um, you mentioned you mentioned that very specific item, and Zephyr immediately looks at me because I'm sitting next to the door and is like, "Look at the sidewall where the door is. There should be one of those right there." Yeah, cat got it. It's gone. <laughs> <laughs> cat stole it. And now the cat has an accomplice, so either one of them could have stolen it. Oh, shit. <laughs> you know, I'm looking at this counter, and it, it just doesn't feel right, because I don't see the Rick roll. But I do see cat as an asshole. <laughs> does, it, does that only say it one? No, because any instance we figure out about the cat being an asshole is an extra cat count counter. I feel um, well. You should put you should put two you should put two zeros behind that one on on cat is an asshole because all cats are assholes. <laughs> and if one you of, think your cat is not an asshole, it's just waiting for the perfect opportunity. I was gonna I, say see, one of my cats they, is, one of them isn't. No, all yeah, cats are say, assholes. Cinder is a perfect angel. Say, Celeste. Thank you. Uh, she's the troublemaker. You got that one backwards. No, I didn't. I know exactly what I said. <laughs> you just have favoritism because he sits on your lap. Well, there you go. Damn cat, straight, man. Cat, cat said an asshole is number 69. <laughs> I love you guys. And here comes the I love Worth. encounter. <laughs> Bang. Oh, God. We have to add that one too now. <laughs> How much have you had to drink? Ba -da 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 -da. I started with the shot that Chris asked, da -da 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 -da. and now and I've just finished a Seagram's, and we've only been not doing this how many minutes? Oh shit! I forgot. Uh, add another one. She said she had a, a shot, a Seagram's, and whatever she's drinking now. Another Seagram's. Oh, another Seagram's. <laughs> I decided not to do four shots after the last incident. Well, you got to remember, listening to the last episode, it, it only took like one shot for her to really start down this road of I love you. And... What happened? How many drinks have been finished so far? <laughs> well, considering my drink is a giant jug of fucking wine, I'm pretty 
sure I'm not gonna finish mine. <laughs> nice. That sounds like quitting words. All right, guys. All right, guys, listening. I up drinking. Guys, listening in. You heard the voice right now talking about the giant jug of wine. Tell me that isn't Robert from fucking Everybody Hate uh, Loves Raymond. <laughs> <laughs> Do me a favor, go shark bait, ooh ha ha. Shark bait, ooh ha ha. Are you talking about Patrick Warburton? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, the fucking the, uh, the the cop brother. He also did the voice of the the, the fish in Finding Nemo. The shark bait, ooh ha ha. Yeah, I thought that was the Patrick Warburton. No, Patrick Warburton's like the dude who was helping out uh, the creepy old lady in fucking uh, Hercules. Or or Emperor's last group. Yeah, Kronk. Kronk. Kronk, thank yes, you. I thought, I thought he was the fish too. No. The dude from Everybody Loves Raymond. Look up look up the IMDB for Everybody Loves Raymond. Uh there is a belch counter going, but I'm gonna have to <laughs> I now realize I'm sharing my screen as I'm scrolling through Patrick Warburton's IMDB page. Yes, right. you are. It gives me something to look at. But don't make Brad me dizzy. Garrett. Okay? That, that's his Brad name. Garrett, Brad Garrett. Yeah. Brad Garrett. <laughs> See, I'm the only one. All right. So there's an additional belch. <laughs> See, I'm the only one not <laughs> The fuck was that? I don't know. That was exactly what you asked for. Short bait. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. To be fair, I bought this giant jug of wine thinking it was soy sauce. And okay. You know what? Okay. In hindsight, you look at it, you don't think soy sauce. You do think well, alcohol. I mean, it was amongst all the soy sauce. Yeah, no, that's Who the fuck point. puts a random jug of wine amongst the shelves of soy sauce? Who does that? An Asian market. <sighs> Apparently... To be fair, though, I only bought it for the jug. Still an amazing jug. To be fair. To be fair. And the fact that it's wine is, makes it even an even better value. <laughs> I'll admit, I have bought bottles of stuff that I never intended to drink because I wanted the bottle for another purpose. Oh, yeah. please do tell the, the purpose. I'm a LARPer, <laughs> and I'm also a historical reenactor, so bottles get used for, you know, other purposes and those venues. Time for a copyright strike. Go ahead. Hit it. <laughs> hit it. It is playing. But we There's can't no hear audio. it. I was going to say, I think. Oh, it's not coming through. Nope. That is so not fair. I, I'm fixing this right now. You're fixing this right now. There's Get on that. I, I guess. I guess. I just want to tell you how I'm feeling. We see. This is why we need Salem. He sings these. Damn, that comes up quick on a search. <laughs> Ready for the sing along, guys? Here we go. <laughs> And ten. That was just for you, Chris. That was all for you. <laughs> I, I had to. I had to stop because I don't want to. I don't want to get an actual copyright strike. Fair use. Yeah, oh. say, we, we really don't need a copyright strike. Okay. Guys. So, so what you do is when you put the final episode up for that entire segment, you just put the, uh, um, please stand by technical difficulties and play Spanish sleep. <laughs> I don't think I should finish this bottle. This is no. You gotta that, finish that's, it. That's what I. That's what I did when I deployed. Was I changed my Facebook profile picture to the technical difficulties? Please wait with all the Technicolor bars and everything. And I put a link to the YouTube video for Spanish Flea on the picture. So anybody who went to like oh, look at. Shit. Do that. So anybody, that anybody who went to look at my profile picture saw the link, and anybody curious clicked it, and it, it immediately went to Spanish Flea. It was the most hilarious thing I ever did. 
I mean, to be fair, I don't remember that because I was busy with one of the biggest mistakes of my life. But that's beside the point. Okay, um, we're gonna we're gonna fix one of these here. Uh, the it's cat is an asshole. I think it needs to be renamed to every, every time uh, it. To be fair, got mentioned. <laughs> to be fair. To be fair. Which, by the way, I'm not I'm not picking on you because I had a long standing tradition of saying the phrase uh, stuff of that nature on podcasts, and I mean it drove me nuts. <laughs> to be fair. To be fair, it drove me nuts. And, and, that, and that, that that that's not the that's not the amount of time as uh or that's not the amount of times to be fair has been mentioned. That is uh how long the to be fair is to be held. <laughs> the only reason why I I, I I I letter Kenny's got me so I always say it after other people. It's obnoxious, but it's what I do. To be fair. To be fair. <laughs> to be fair. <laughs> Uh, it's I'm it's sorry, it's why are we friends? It's more fun when you when you have when you have like visual with all your friends. So one of them can do like the hand stop, like Wayne does. Oh yes, it is. Oh, I love that show. I I tried. So you're on a podcast. I really did try. I I just so you're on a podcast dry. one night with your friends. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> So Dusty, and you're thinking a little bubbly, yes. I, I, I gotta ask, and I think I think everybody here really wants to know. Uh-huh. When you were forced to sit down and listen to After Hours, uh huh. What went through your mind realizing what you said and did during that show? Um, the I maybe I should start drinking more so I don't get drunk as fast. <laughs> that seems to be the right way to answer. <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I listen to that when I don't know who that person is, but everybody that I know that loves me is like, they love listening to it. They said Drunk Dusty is a, is a loving creature. They like it. So, For which is why... Drunk uh, Dusty is amazing. Drunk Dusty has always been amazing. But see, I don't, I, I've never heard Drunk Dusty before, so that's a new one. Well, I mean, that's oh, part of... Oh, hell, the goddess Empress Flora, stop oh, the don't, rains, oh, don't, flowers. Oh, don't hell! Don't start that, don't start that, guys. I'm not a goddess anymore. We left that behind, remember? Wake <laughs> Al! Three of your followers are in the same oh, room. <laughs> oh, hell, the goddess Empress Flora. Stop her up, Rain. Forever may happen. she live in the tulips and the roses and the irises. <laughs> may the daisies sing of her glory for days to come. Hell. I mean, he's going straight to Gregorian chanting. I know. <laughs> and that was the short version. And for, and for, you know, Chris and other people listening that don't understand, there once upon a time was about 700 people that would follow me around and worship me at, at some events we could go to. So, unfortunately, it's a real thing that they're doing. Yes. We would dance around her to get the rain to stop. And it, and it worked. worked. The steering wheel was worked. If we danced long enough, the rain stopped. And it's not even that. It's any time that she would smile and laugh, the clouds literally parted and shone right onto her before clearing entirely. You could not make this shit up. Which was usually just like, it happened to be just the right timing, but like, it just made it so that it worked so much better and it was just like aligned so perfectly. And the, it's the so joke, much harder for her to deny it. The, the joke approved of our joke. The joke, the joke became. <laughs> The joke became so ingrained in our LARP that we do that one of our other friends in the LARP who writes children's storybooks came up with an idea for a storybook called Mama Flora and the Cult That Got Away. <laughs> that was pretty good, too, by the way. I, I need that book in my life. Oh, I do, too. And I know who wrote it, too, so I, I, I will message I, him later. I have never gotten to see this book. I need to see this. I don't know if it ever got written. I know they came up with the idea for it. I don't know if they all, ever actually All I know is it got to the point where if I went to a porta potty or a bathroom, I'd come outside and there'd be tons of people prostrated all around it and I couldn't walk. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I might have had a little fun one day during Ragnarok. Give me a break. It happened every time. It wasn't just you. <laughs> 60% of the time, all the time. <laughs> all right. Well, since we don't really have a topic of conversation, we've already gotten a half hour into this episode here. 
I promised an <laughs> interview session. I had promised an interview session that we would possibly do a breaking the fourth wall, which wound up becoming after hours, because of the simple fact of apparently Dusty, which we all know is a uh, divorced. She is a uh, she is consciously uncoupled. But I've yes. come to recently come to learn that it was Zephyr's fault. I did. That is an exaggeration. <laughs> bullshit. That is straight. <laughs> Bullshit. It well, to be fair, she kind of sucked. So, I mean, like, I demand really, my uh, portion of blame on that because I rightfully deserve it. In all reality, it wasn't fair. Really anybody's fault. It was. It was. Mo it was mostly UA. I just simply provided the locale. All right. Well, uh, let's let hear the fair. story. Let, let me put it this way: For many years, I was invited to a par the parties at Zephyr's home, and I always said no because the ex said no. And then one year I said, you know what, I'm going. And then the ex said no. And I said, oh, I'm going to use my car. He goes, I own the car. I said, fine, I'm going to call a friend. And I called a friend. And I went to this party, which happened to be at Zephyr's house. And I, I, I pulled two more guys in the car, and we all went out. God damn, she uh, ran train. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, 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 the, the one thing you have, the one thing you have to know about me is I have very few female friends. Like Zephyr's wife's one of them. Almost all my friends are guys. So that's to be fair, for me. I would to like to make a note. He uh -huh. was invited too. He decided not to come. So anything that happened, that's on him. Well, question and, uh, was, was he was he a friend of yours? Your, you guys, yeah, we tolerated, a very we, loose we tolerated him. We tolerated him because he was, him. he was married to Mama Flora. So, well, no, that that's why I asked. Was he was he a friend of the group, or was he just somebody who was attached to a friend of a group? Attached, attached. to a friend of a group. Okay. Basically, if I wasn't allowed to go anywhere alone, so if I wanted to see my friends, he had to be there. And let me guess, when he was there, he was usually that guy who was like, can we go, can we go, like, not interacting, not really being a part of the, the, the conversation. Well, no, actually. I wouldn't even go there because he, he would try to integrate into the group and try at least make an attempt for an hour or so. But the way that his attitude and the way that he comes off eventually shows itself, it rubs people the wrong way really, really quickly. Okay. <laughs> and if you went and if, if you went to one of the camping events where I would hang out with these guys, he would spend the whole time in the tent. Do well, you want to know what that's he was doing not entirely tent? true. <laughs> yeah, fair. Uh, mom, I'm, I'm yeah. gonna yeah. I'm, I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. There uh -huh. was one event that you know that he specifically made sure to go out for every event. Yeah, well, that was the exception. Exactly. And what was what was the event? Mardi Gras. Yeah. Well, of course, oh. got to go get those beads. Gotta, yeah. Got to go give those beads. Got to got to get got to get separate and give that face. <laughs> the one event I didn't not, go to. That hey, that is not the face I made at Mardi Gras. The face I made at Mardi Gras was one of pure glee because. There was a there was a set of twins that used to run around Mardi Gras who called themselves good and evil. Oh God, and they I made love you those pick, women. They made you pick between good and evil, and then you were supposed to do a shot from their tits. I couldn't choose. And uh, I'm I I, I walked up and did the fucking Road to El Dorado skit of both. Both is good. <laughs> I did the exact same thing, and I was a very happy man. I got to do I got to do two very very lovely shots that night. My first Ragnarok. Well, see, with that Mardi Gras, the only Mardi Gras story I have because I always avoided it like the plague because I didn't start drinking till last year. Um, Why? We'll, we'll go into that another time. <laughs> uh, again, X making her think that alcohol is not Bad. something that she can enjoy. So, what one Mardi Gras, I went down, and the guy that's in charge of it handed me a flashlight and said, "Okay, now flash everybody here." They get piled me up with beads, waited till it was dark, had me go back, go, "Wow, that party's rocking!" And they're like, "What did you do?" I said, "I flashed the entire group," and they're like, "What?" It was great, and it wasn't a lie. <laughs> All right, so back to the story. You 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 got a friend.
pick you up to take you to this party that your that your ex did not want you to go to. I had a curfew. He told me I had to be back by eight a.m. Even though it's a four-hour drive. I mean, that's that's a pretty fair curfew. <laughs> eight a.m. It's a four-hour drive, though. Hey, he said eight a.m. He didn't say what day. That's true, but I, I I went back the next day. I was good, and I went to the party, and I had a great time. And there was even a picture to prove it. All right, so I'm still waiting for how UA and and uh, Zephyr wound up being the cause, direct cause of your demise. Well, I'll let you explain your hand in it because mine's a little more intricate. So, honestly, if anyone is really truly to blame. It's me. For for the, the, the decision for Dusty's divorce, it is probably my lovely wife. Yes. Because my wife sat down and had the conversation with Dusty of, you have to look at something and decide, is this really what you want? At the time, I was sitting on her lap in a hot tub. Oh, yeah. We played past the Dusty in the hot tub. <laughs> I, I mean, if I, if I was, you know... In somebody's lap, or in turn, they were in my lap. I'd probably be very suge- uh, open to suggestion too. <laughs> no, basically, I had been having issues for many, many years, and she actually brought it to light. Stuff that I, I, I was feeling guilty about making the decision, and she helped me make get past that guilt and realize it's not guilt; it's saving yourself. So, listeners, please pay attention. I, I know you're not used to seriousness in after hours, but uh. It, 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 there's something to be learned from this. If you're not happy, get out. Yeah, mm-hmm. for real. Because uh, uh, no mar- staying in something you're not happy. In. Marriage should not be a ball and chain, and it doesn't even need to be marriage. It can be anything that qualifies as a relationship. If yep. you look at yourself in the mirror and you see that you are not happy, you have an obligation to yourself to fix that. Well, I have they're, 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 the best relationship that I've ever had in my entire life. I'm with a wonderful woman. I'm very happy. I always want to be with her. Like they, it's not. It's never like God. I can't wait to go to work to get away from this woman. It's always I want. I, I would like to work with this woman <laughs> so that we wouldn't have to be apart ever. And they get married. We are getting married. And Wait, does she I come with her own patch kit? With this relationship, I realized that this is actually what it should be. It shouldn't be, well, I really need my alone time because I'm sick of you. It should be all the time I want to be with you. And if no, that's not what you have, you really need to reconsider. You're, if, you're not wrong. If you're, you're definitely changing not wrong. who you are, if you're trying to suffer through it, that's not a healthy relationship. I've actually invited my wife on multiple occasions to be a part of these podcasts, but she just doesn't think that podcasting's her thing, so she that's declines. Fine. That's fine. That's and that's fine. absolutely fine. It's we each fun. we each have our interests, but uh, we love each other all the same, despite our difference in interests. And we have a lot of the interests that are the same, which helps. It's not it's not a requirement, but it helps. Well, you know what? And it was. A, you know. If you want to introduce her to see if podcasting is her thing, bring her on After Hours because it's the one podcast that's really not a podcast. It's just us sitting around telling uh, funny stories. We, we actually we actually extended her the invitation of if she wanted to do After Hours tonight, but she was like, nah, I'm good. <laughs> and, and after the party, just to finish that one up, when I went home three days later, things exploded because I had gone to the party. And it's when I realized, you know what? I don't want to live like this anymore. Now, to be that's fair... Simple. In, in the conversation, in the conversation, I definitely want to get the rest of this, and I want to get, I want to get to be UA's, fair. To be fair, to, uh, I definitely want to get UA's side of this uh, uh, on his involvement. But uh, to to go to the point that I was making before about like the, the serious point where you know if you're unhappy, leave. That doesn't necessarily mean the first argument you guys get into. Too many, too many people nowadays use divorce or or breakup as just you know if it's not a hundred percent the way I want it, it's gone relationships do take work and sometimes the unhappiness is simply because you guys haven't figured out how to co-heal co- co-heal together Fix before you break. communication is key yep. and then there's times where you feel like you have to be there because you have no choice and you don't think there's any way out and yeah, then- honestly the biggest 
the the most important sign that your relationship is probably not going to be solvent for very long is if you feel like you can't talk to your partner about yeah. stuff. <clears throat> That so. is the relationship killer right there. If you feel like you can't talk to your partner about stuff, you seriously need to reevaluate that relationship because you should be a, you should be comfortable with going to your partner about anything. And that's fair, exactly it. To be fair, we're not talking fair. about we're not we're not talking about going to your to your significant other and saying, "Hey, uh, did you read the new X Men comic?" And she has no interest in comics. That that's not what we're talking about. What we're talking about with being able to communicate is that you can share intimate things with each other. And I, again, I don't mean sex. When I say intimate, I mean like <laughs> emotions, feelings, fears that you yeah. wouldn't share with anybody else, but you should be able to share with your significant other. And if yeah. you're afraid to even talk to them because of what's going to happen if you do, go get help. I didn't get help mm -hmm. soon enough, and I regret that. And that has been your public service announcement. So anyway, back now to back this party. Now back to the secrets. Uh, no. And knowing is knowing half, is half the, battle. the battle. G.I. Joe. I love you guys. <laughs> we really need to switch. We need to really. Uh, did I put the level? Uh, I did. I did put the I love you counter up. We really need to like switch up occasionally with the, with the whole knowing is half the battle thing. Because G.I. Joe now and Transformers know. both did it. So every, every once in a the while. you know. Every once in a while, we need to throw in a monotone. The Transformers. Robots in disguise. All the 80s, when every cartoon was unnecessarily violent and had a public service announcement towards the end. Thank oh. you, Hasbro. I mean, really, only the Hasbro shows that had a public really service announcement. Un unnecessarily, and they were all unnecessarily violent. violent. <laughs> unnecessarily violent. Not one person died in G.I. Joe. Not one That's person. That's true. But a no. handgun could blow up a tank. Yep. Fair. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, even G.I. Joe the movie had no balls. They, Serpentor put a cobra through Duke's heart, and he was alive by the end of the damn movie. Right. However, Transformers said, fuck that, hold my beer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they killed Jazz. What the fuck? Well, to... I don't Sorry, mean the, I don't mean the movie. I don't I don't mean I don't mean the live action Michael Bay movies. I mean no. well, the cartoon. The 1986 oh movie. yeah, Ni the 1980, the 1984 well, movie. Yeah. To, to be fair, in the original seasons of Transformers, there, to my knowledge, there weren't actually any deaths. It was the 1986 mo Transformers the movie where death suddenly became a very real thing in this concept, yep. and a lot of characters that were beloved by many people for reasons outside of need to be mentioned, got axed. I would like to talk about another person who claims not to kill people, but let's look oh, about no. Batman. No. He says, I don't kill people, no. but you don't beat someone that severely and throw them from a roof and they get up and walk away. I'm just mm -hmm. saying, a lot of those mi hit minions died. A lot of those henchmen died. <laughs> well, which iteration and of Batman And this has been your daily about. rant from Anvil. Batman... Is a fucking murderer. He's a vigilante murderer. Which, and which sure, I guess he's cleaning up crime about? or whatever, but he's still a vigilante murderer. Which which uh, which incarnation are we talking about? Because like if we're talking about the Tim Burton one. Yeah, he's a straight up murderer. If you're talking yeah, about Tim like, Burton, like the, the cartoons, uh, three at least three of the cartoons that I can think of, Batman Beyond. Um, well, Batman Beyond you know, wasn't I, Bruce Wayne. Yeah. Bruce was well. the one that had the no kill policy, unless you're talking about the Tim Burton movies. But um, right. Say what you want about Batman not actually following his uh, no killing policy, but the no killing policy being a part of the canon did give us one of the most badass scenes of comics history of somebody breaking into the Batcave and by by uh, extension Wayne Manor. And Alfred loading a shotgun <laughs> while talking to this person, Ooh. going, "You may have, you may have banked on 
my master's vow against killing. Let me assure you, I subscribe to no such niceties. Alfred's my favorite say, character just, on that. Sorry. Alfred was a World War II vet. He, he, wasn't he, was even, a he wasn't just a World War II vet. He was a member of his of his Majesty's Secret Service for yeah. a brief time. He was a bona fide spy. He had a lot of training. This man knew how to hurt you in 50 different ways. <laughs> Special force. That is not the old man you pick a fight with. Nope. <laughs> That's my goal to be the old person you don't want to pick a fight with. Right there. Like I want I want to see a comic book story that just follows the, the story of Batman, but very quickly you realize in the background Alfred's just going off and offing the people that Batman lets live. <laughs> I yeah. love that story. I'm it's saying. no longer Bat Batman. Batman's no longer Bruce, brooding. Bruce oh. thinks he's cleaning up crime in Gotham when in reality Alfred's going on one of the largest killing sprees in history. I can see that too. <laughs> I can see that too because Batman starts getting out of his brooding funk. He's like, I'm really making a difference. I had conversations with them and they totally turned a new leaf. I've never even had to see or hear from them again. As you have Alfred in the background cleaning a shotgun. Oh, that's great, Master Bruce. <laughs> Cleaning <laughs> <laughs> the dirt off his shovel. That's that's fantastic. That's, that's a DC one shot if ever I did hear it. <laughs> <laughs> fucking fucking Batman goes toe to toe with the Joker, and the Joker's all like, "Ha ha! You can't beat me. You and I are two sides of the same coin." Stop. Stops mid sentence as he sees Alfred just standing in the background holding a shotgun, going. <laughs> By the way, finger wag for our audio listeners. Finger waggle. No. -uh. Finger wag. <laughs> I mean, I can see it happen. I mean, you could you could do it as a a live anime or not live, but an animated movie. I mean, look what they did to the Killing Joke. That's right. Oh. And you know what? I don't hate the movie. The Killing Joke was fine. It was just that one fucking scene. You mean the entire opening that explains why Barbara becomes paralyzed? No, before that, we're on a rooftop. She and uh, Bruce wind up getting into essentially statutory rape. Yeah. Which, by the way, never happened in the actual comic for those who never read it. No, but no. they did hook well, up on more than one that, occasion. It didn't happen in The Killing Joke. That was an entirely different comics line. I don't know why they included it in the Killing Joke movie. I can't it's believe like the, I, I can't believe Mark Hamill <laughs> let it happen too. Like as big of a Batman or a, a comic book nerd as Mark Hamill is, like, and of course having the clout as being the greatest Joker who's ever been recorded, to turn around and say, "I'm not doing the movie if you leave the scene in." Excuse me. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Pink. <laughs> I, I just I can't believe they put that in there like I kept thinking to myself watching it it's like okay I know Killing Joke is R rated you know the, the comic itself but this was done in the style of Batman the Animated Series which was for fucking kids yeah you know and you're having this happen during the, the you know animated for kids this is canon to that world. <laughs> and and to get off that subject, I'm putting a whole different one out for you guys to discuss. Uh -oh. <laughs> what did, did you put up? Many started, oh, Many oh, starting uh, to suspect that that uh, groundhogs know jack all about weather. <laughs> it's, a, it's a legit article. So, uh, Chris, I'm sorry. I know that you want to get back as to how I ended Dusty's. Oh, yeah, that's all really, that. this, is, this is like an episode of The Simpsons, man. I, I, I know you want it. I know you want the answer to that, but we'll get to that at a different time. Can Probably. we please all agree that Groundhog Day is the most bullshitted holiday on the fucking calendar? No matter how you look at it, it's still six more weeks of winter. Thank you. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Look at the fucking calendar. You know that already. Wait, are we talk are we talking bullshit in the fact that like uh it really doesn't mean anything, or are we talking bullshit in the sense of, like, where I'll argue with you in the sense of, like, there are way worse holidays than Groundhog Day. I mean, Ground Groundhog Day is barely a holiday. It's just a, a gopher gets pulled out of a hole for two minutes, and the day's over. We're not talking... <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, we're not talking about like holidays that were made up to sell fucking greeting cards. Like, I don't know, Valentine's Day. Yep. Hey, Groundhog Day is important to me, and I'm celebrating now every year because one year ago, Groundhog's Day, I moved into this apartment with my kids on my own two feet. That's a good well, thing. Okay, that I'm willing to exchange Groundhog Day for Flora's Independence Day. Yep, that's Flora what I celebrated. Day. That's what I, I, I suggest we send out a petition to change <laughs> Groundhog Day to Flora Independence Day. Give it up, Flora! <laughs> I was waiting. I was kind of waiting for the town crier to start in on the on the uh, goddess Flora Independence Day. All oh, hail the goddess Empress Flora! Hear ye, hear ye! Henceforth, February second shall be known as Flora Independence Day. We shall celebrate by dancing around the goddess Empress Flora statues. If we found wait, not wait, wait, to wait. dance, shall wait, wait, be statues? put wait, in the pillories and prostrated around town to be poked, prodded, and made fun of. Wait a minute, prostrated, prostrated, <laughs> then probed and probed and prodded. And, and what yes. was there? And where, wait, there's statues. What? Don't, you don't need to worry about it. <sighs> don't even worry. They did play that on that. Note, on that note, we have some bombs to defuse and. Uh, or possibly That's how we all ended up on a watch list. <laughs> <laughs> At least we'll go to jail it's a game. together. It's, it's oh, wait, a game, no. I swear. I You're go to a different game. At this point. Just remember, just remember <laughs> that's what uh, Matthew Broderick's character said in War Games. <laughs> Keep in mind, that's what the unit bomber said, too. It was all a game to me. Well, you guys Horticle. can go to the mail prison, and I'll just wave bye-bye. I did say we were disarming them, right? It's not like we're, we're plant, planting them. Anyways. <laughs> to quote Jeffrey Dahmer, hmm, tastes like chicken. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love you guys. This is great. Hey! <laughs> On that note, guys, we're going to go ahead and end this episode of After Hours. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did in any capacity, hit that thumbs up button, like, share, comment, subscribe. Check out all the other great podcasts of Realm of the Mist Entertainment. And, of course, jump over to our sister channel, Sounds Dicey Gaming, for all your tabletop gaming needs as well as video game Let's Plays <laughs> like the Unabombers over here are going to tell you about in a couple seconds. But, of course, if hey! you... <laughs> But, of course, if you prefer your podcast in audio format, just look up Realm of the Mist Entertainment on Anchor.fm, Apple iTunes, Spotify, Pandora, or wherever quality podcasts can be heard. Going around the room, starting with Dusty, because ladies first. Oh, I'm sorry if it's ladies first. UA. Uh, tell oh. <laughs> Shots fired. Actually, I was going to say Zephyr. <laughs> oh, that's true. You do have the beads on. It's chainmail. Oh, yeah, no, that's a fair point. <laughs> I am the prettiest. Anyway. Princess. Go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead and tell everybody where they can find me. I you. am the prettiest princess you have ever met. Anyways, Dusty, where can we find you? I'm half of the sock drawer. The other half is not here because, well. He's not. It's, it's not a matching pair. <laughs> <laughs> He's behind the dryer. <laughs> no, he's in the wind trap. <laughs> I left him at the laundromat, I think. But no. I'll... Salem, I, if you listen to this, I do apologize. I didn't mean to pick on you when you're not here. <laughs> but anyway. Yes. The... You can find us on the sock drawer, which is every place that you know he just mentioned, and we're also on Facebook. If you go to the sock drawer or on Twitter, the sock drawer SD, shoot us a message if you want to have us talk about it. We're happy to listen and you know talk. Who's next? Zephyr Zero. I guess I'll go. I'm Zephyr Zero. You can find me on Press A Gaming Podcast as the host, and uh, pretty much after hours whatever podcast they shanghai me into it at a, at a, at a time uh and uh occasionally on let's plays next uh this has been ua black wings you can find me on facebook and youtube under josh or joshua wilson you can also find me on twitter and twitch under the handle black wings roman numeral 13 and hopefully you'll be seeing me on a whole lot more of Roman of the mist coming up soon Hopefully not too much, a whole lot. Yes, <laughs> we, we want to stay on air. 
<laughs> Handle. Why? Why you have? Why you have to do that? I got rid of the shots fired counter. <laughs> no, tally it on. Tally it for the next episode. <sighs> and of course, I am Anvil, the all-consuming flaming gluttony, and the crier of Mama Flora, the goddess Empress Flora, stopper of rains, bringer of flowers. <laughs> <laughs> for, for those who can't see us, which is everyone, we are now doing the Mama Flora dance, which is where you make a flower that pops out of the ground and then opens up and closes back into a bulb. Oh, there will be a dance. video on YouTube soon enough. Oh, God. we'll even put up a diagram. <laughs> it's just gonna be it's just gonna be me, Anvil, and UA doing the flower dance. Oh no, someone's got a man and black leotard, and black <laughs> leotard like a fucking choreographed dance session. <laughs> and this is the episode that kills after hours. Have a good night. <laughs> in, in black and white. We're going to bring Mama Flora here for it so we can show you how to dance around her properly. <laughs> or the statue of her, you know, whichever. No, I'm telling you, I want this fucking video. Black, I think Madonna's Vogue. <laughs> Trust me, it won't be that hard to do. <laughs> Oh. That's it, guys. Thank you very much for joining us, and we'll catch you on the next After Hours. Have a good night. Outro. Oh,